There we go. Okay. So I want to give you next a brief uh, introduction to uh, signal and image uh, processing, actually algorithms that we use in signal and image processing, focusing on the design of these algorithms and uh, basic theory that is underlying uh, um, signal and image processing. And we are going to do everything totally geometrically. So formulas will be, of course, inevitable shorthand for what we want to express, but uh, we want to do, to have a clear picture uh, what we are doing at uh, every stage, so that you literally cannot forget. Uh, uh, so <coughs> one of the main tools of mathematics is geometry, right? To do geometry, say on a plane, what do you have to be able to measure? What, what concepts are crucial for geometry? Distance. Distances first, or that would be the length, length of segments, right? And what is the other concept? Angle. Angles, exactly. Once you have well-behaved uh, distances and angles, you can do geometry. Uh, for and distances and angles can be defined in whatever way uh, for as long as they satisfy certain basic axioms uh, uh, they will be equally good uh, to do geometry right so it's another type of this generalization when we have good idea about geometry say in r squared or r cube and then we port it to uh, domains uh, that we don't have an intuition about lengths uh, and uh, angles, but we have formulas that allow us to manipulate things as if these were just simple Euclidean distances and angles. Uh, <coughs> so, um, how do we represent vectors? So, say we are either in R to the N, or complex numbers to the power n. So uh, here the elements are tuples uh, of numbers, right? Uh, so uh, in particular, you can have, for example, x1, x2, up to xn that belongs to either r to the n or uh, c to the n. Okay. Um, and say you can have z1, z2, up to zn that belongs to, oops, that belongs to c to the n. So the crucial notion that allow, that allow us to uh, speak about the distances and the angles is the notion of a scalar product. So in R to the N, the scal scalar product of a vector X times vector y is simply defined as sum i equals from 1 to n xi yi. So you multiply coordinate wise and sum total of these numbers. In uh, c to the n, when you have a complex numbers, in order to have the necessary properties uh, of distances and angles, you have to define scalar products in a tiny bit different way. So uh, x times y is actually sum i equals from 1 to, the, to n xi yi conjugate, right? So um, if you have uh, u plus ev, 
and you conjugate it, you get u minus ib, right? So now, one can verify, but we will not bother with that, that this thus defines a scalar product, satisfies all the axioms that a good scalar product should have. Okay. Now, how do we define the length of a vector here? Well, the length of a vector uh, x right, is uh, equal to the square root of the scalar product of x Sorry, sometimes I write x one way, sometimes the other way, so let me unify the notation. So uh, x dot, oops, dot x by itself. So now you can see the, the length should be some, a positive, a non-negative number, right? And now you can see why you need this uh, complex conjugation, uh, because uh, in uh, C to the n, you will have that norm of, of the length of x is equal to uh, the square root of the sum i equals from 1 to n uh, xi times xi conjugate, uh, which is equal square root of sum i equals from 1 to n. What is xi times x conjugate? That's important equality. So x times x conjugate is the norm of x. Uh, uh, so uh, this is for vectors, let me just for complex numbers, uh, z times z conjugate is just the absolute value of z squared, the, the modulus of the complex number, which is equal, of course, uh, um, u squared plus v squared if z is equal u plus iv. So this then becomes absolute value of xi uh, squared. And we know that the absolute value of a complex number is a non-negative number, so is the sum. And so the length of x the length of vector x has natural property that is non-negative. And in fact, it's easy to prove that uh, uh, if the only vector uh, whose uh, uh, norm or length is equal to 0 is just the 0 vector. OK, so this is our definition of distance, right? of the length of a vector, how do we define the angles? Uh, well, one can show, uh, so it would be a lemma whose proof you have in the notes, but uh, uh, you won't, uh, we won't do it uh, in class, uh, is that the uh, scalar product of x <coughs> times y by absolute value Right, is smaller or equal than the norm of x times uh, the norm of y. Right, so the scalar product by its absolute value is always smaller or equal than the length of uh, the two vectors. And then as a consequence, uh, you have uh, that uh, uh, x times y by absolute, absolute value divided by uh, length of x times length of y 
is smaller or equal to than one, right? If you divide. And what does this mean? Well, because this quantity is smaller or equal to one, we can call it cosine of an angle. And in fact, define uh, so cosine of angle x y is uh, equal to absolute value of x dot y. They are all vectors, right? Uh, divide, oops, not, not the absolute value, because cosine can be both positive and negative, of course. Uh, it's just a scalar product of x and y divided by absolute value of x times absolute value of y. Now, <coughs> if you are in, say, R cube or C cube, say specifically in R cube or R squared, this cosine is precisely the cosine of the angle between uh, lines in the usual uh, sense, right? But as you will see, when we start doing basics of signal processing, sometimes we will have strange objects that are not finitary, and then we will use these two formulas, right, for norm, and this formula for angle uh, as definitions, right? They won't be directly uh, or kind of uh, corresponding to anything intuitive, so to speak, but the calculus will, we will prove that norm and scalar product have desired properties, and then you can manipulate them as if they are tuples of real or complex numbers. And that's, for, as I always say, the value of mathematics is that you can do things that you don't understand, right? So we will have lengths of band-limited signals, right? What does this mean? Well, it will be defined by a formula. Uh, we have absolutely no clue why this should be called the length, except that it satisfies the desired properties, right? And then we can proceed using our intuition that we have for r cube or uh, r squared and carry for the calculations uh, formally and get uh, uh, consistent results. Okay. So, <coughs> At the moment, we, are, we will be working in R to the N or C to the N, and there we have these explicit formulas for angles and lengths. Now, another important uh, notion in any vector space is a basis, right? So, uh, we say that uh, vectors, uh, say, x1, or let's call them b1, uh, uh, b1 to bn are uh, basis uh, if uh, uh, they are linearly independent. Right, i.e., if you have lambda 1, b1 plus, plus lambda n, bn equal to 0, this implies that uh, lambda 1 up to lambda n must all be equal to 0. So they're independent and uh, for uh, Every x in uh, that space, so it's always a basis uh, of, uh, say, a space x. Uh, in that space x, uh, x is equal to some, uh, um, say, uh, Uh, alpha one, uh, alpha one, b one, 
plus plus alpha n v n. So every vector is expressible as a linear combination of the basis uh, vectors. Okay. Now the in in a vector space that allows uh, the notion of scalar product, scalar product to be introduced, <coughs> we have particularly good bases that we like the best, which are orthonormal bases. Uh, so <coughs> our basis uh, of x is uh, uh, orthonormal. Uh, if uh, uh, bi times bj, if scalar product of two vectors is equal to 1, if i equals to j and it is equal 0, if i is not equal to j. Yeah? <coughs> okay. So why do we love orthonormal bases? Well, for several reasons. First, they have very nice properties that simplify the calculations. But as engineers, orthonormal bases are the most numerically robust bases. Right? So they are by far the, <coughs> the easiest to calculate with without um, a large uh, uh, error accumulation. Okay, so if if a basis is orthonormal, and you write x as alpha one b one plus alpha n b n, let's multiply as a sc scalar product uh, b with one of the basis vectors, say b i. Right? So what do we get? We get x bi. Now the property of the scalar product, one of these fundamental properties that we didn't list, is that it is linear. Right? So uh, you will have that uh, uh, this is uh, equal to um, alpha 1 b1 times bi plus alpha 2 b2 times bi plus, plus alpha i bi times bi and finally dot 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 plus uh, alpha alpha n b n times b i. Now notice if the basis is orthonormal, all of these uh, will be zero except <coughs> for this one, which will be equal to one. And you immediately get uh, that your alpha i is nothing but the scalar product as of x with the basis vector oops uh, the I, I keep switching so you see a scalar product is written okay I should be consistent let me put, use dot notation but as a side um, so this will be x times the I uh, as a side, you should note that scalar product is sometimes written as uh, a b, and sometimes is written as a dot b. But uh, uh, we choose either of them, and just uh, uh, I don't even remember how I denoted in my lecture notes. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, with brackets, oh well. <laughs> now this will add variety to your experience with 
Okay. <laughs> so <coughs> important thing is, you see, for any if the vectors are not orthonormal, then to solve uh, to find these coefficients, you would have to apply it to each coordinate and then make the co corresponding coordinates equal. So you would get a system of linear equations, right? Which you have to solve simultaneously to find the, the coefficients. <coughs> but here, uh, the coefficients are, can be obtained independently from each other just by multiplying vector x with bi. So what is behind this? Behind this is, uh, so what do we have? We then have that x is equal to uh, x times b1. Um, I have to put it in bracket here, times uh, b1. Now notice this is a scalar. So this is just a number times vector, right? Plus x times b2 uh, times vector b2 plus, plus uh, x times vector bn times bn, right? And this is just the usual picture that we are all so familiar with, namely, say, in R3, right? If you have a vector, say, in R3, how can you represent it using the basis vectors? Well, you do the following. You project it to each of the axes, right? And then you project it here, and you project it there. And then you simply sum this. Um, plus, uh, uh, so this times the basis vector, right? And then, um, uh, let's see how shall we, if we project it like this, then this will be somewhere here, and uh, this will be somewhere here, right? And then this, vector, well, that's the same as the vector here, and plus, finally, uh, plus um, this vector, right? So, so, we simply, so this is the picture, right? Every vector is some of the vectors uh, that are uh, basis vectors times the length of the projection, right? Uh, because what do we have? Uh, what is x times b1, for example, or we'll say, right, uh, b, any vector bi, yeah? right? Well, this is, uh, uh, from the formula for the cosine is uh, length of x times length of bi times cosine of the angle between x and uh, bi. But what is length of bi if this is an orthonormal basis? It's 1. Right? So this is just equal length of x times cosine of the angle between x and bi, right? And that's precisely if this is x, then this here, right? This is the angle between x and bi, and this is precisely length of x times the cosine of the angle. Right? Now, the amazing thing is that almost 100% of what we are going to do in signal processing is just different versions of this very picture. So even famous theorems like Shannon sampling theorem 
they, they have absolutely no content other than this. So it is simply representation, a Shannon theorem is simply representation of a band limited signals through projections on the basis vectors which we will see will be shifted things, right? So this is the main picture that you have to keep in mind, right? That every vector is a linear combination of or the orthonormal basis vectors with coefficients that are equal to the scalar product of that vector and that basis element, right? So there is nothing, this, if you remember this formula and this picture, uh, the rest is just uh, reformulating it in different setups. Uh, okay, now. The, uh, the picture actually uh, uh, of, if you do signal processing in the right way, geometrically, rather than throwing formulas at people, then everything becomes just a very neat picture and uh, uh, totally easy to remember. Okay. Now, in R to the N or C to the N, what is the usual basis? Uh, uh, how do I write vector 3, 5, 4 uh, in usual basis? Uh, what is the usual basis of R3? Exactly, so this is 3 times vector 1, 0, 0, plus 5 times vector uh, 0, 1, 0, plus 4 times vector 0, 0, 1, right? So in general, if you have a vector x, you can write it um, as sum uh, the first coordinate times vector 1, 0, everywhere 0, plus x2 times vector 0, 1, 0, 0, plus at the end you have xn times vector 0, 0, 0, 1. Now let's call these vectors E1, E2, all the way to En, right? So we then have that simply x is equal to the sum of xi, i coordinate, times pi, i goes from 1 to n. So this is how we usually represent vectors. Now, the whole business of discrete Fourier transform can be seen nothing as nothing but the change of base operation, right? So instead, so uh, another base uh, basis uh, uh, is the following basis. So remember <coughs> what we had, uh, what omega n is. Omega n is e to the i times 2 pi over n, right? So, which is of course equal to cosine 2 pi over n plus i times sine 2 pi over n. Now, here is your basis. The basis looks like this. It is omega n to 0, omega n 1, up to omega n 
to the power n minus 1. So this vector we will call f1. So what are, uh, what are its coordinates? Well, its coordinates are just e to the i 2 pi uh, n times 0, e to the i 2 pi divided by n times 1, all the way e to the i <coughs> 2 pi divided by n times n minus 1. Now, that's the first vector. Okay. The kth vector is fk will be equal to now, omega n to 0 is always 1, right? So let's simplify a tiny little bit and write here 1. So here, it will be omega n squared power 1. Omega n, ah, sorry, this is k, so it is to the power k. This is to the power uh, k squared uh, omega n to the power k to the power n minus 1. So the first vector is simply you take all the powers of the primitive roots of unity. Right? For the second vector, you take all the powers of the squares of the roots of unity, all the way to, um, right, and what will be uh, f uh, nth vector? Well, this will be uh, 1, and then omega n to power n minus 1 to the power 1, omega n to power n minus 1 squared up to uh, omega n uh, to the power n minus 1, and then again to the power n minus 1. Now, one would wonder, why the hell would one consider such a complicated basis if we have on our disposal such a simple basis? Uh, and uh, the reason for that will be obvious in a moment, uh, why this basis is so important. Uh, so just for you to get accustomed, uh, let's write with such a basis uh, well first we have to see that this is an orthonormal basis uh, right before we can move anywhere so claim uh, basis uh, uh, f for Fourier which is uh, um, F1 up to Fn as defined over there is an ortho, well, it's uh, an orthogonal basis, but it is not quite normal. Normal means all the basis vectors have length 1. is an orthogonal basis. Uh, well, let's compute uh, the scalar product uh, f uh, uh, k times f m. Right? What is this? According to our definition, this is sum. 
when i equals from 1 to n, and then product of the corresponding coordinates, so it will be fk uh, i coordinate times uh, fm conjugate i coordinate, right? So here, Um, the notes the height are uh, coordinate of uh, x in general. So, so let's see what this is equal to. Right? Well, this will be equal to sum when i equals from 1 to n. Now, what is the i coordinate of fk? Yeah? Well, the, this will be the i coordinate with, of the kth power here. So this is omega n k to the power i, right? Because this is how we form kth has Right, and then i coordinate is taken to the power i times complex conjugate of omega n uh, power m and then also to power i. Right. So what is this? Well, this is sum when i equals from 1 to n. What is this? Well, this is uh, uh, e to the power 2 pi and then k times i divided by n, right, uh, times, uh, now notice um, the complex conjugate of uh, e to the i omega complex conjugate is just e to the minus i omega, right? Because cosine of omega, minus omega will be just cosine of omega, but sine of uh, uh, minus omega will be minus sine, right? Because this is equal to, let me write it down for you. Yes. I Sorry? Imaginary i. Oh, 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 I'm missing the... Oh, now I have both i as imaginary okay. unit and, okay, how do I solve this problem? <laughs> By using indexing variable j. <laughs> so this will be j, this will be j, so this here will be j, and i...